Well, guys, I'm stuck at home today. My office is closed. And this morning we had about two inches of snow on the ground, which the snow has now changed, as you can probably hear, to freezing rain. So my entire driveway and the roads and everything are just solid ice. So when life gives you lemons, what do you do? You make lemonade, or in my case, some beer. Stay with me. Hey guys, it's Robert from Redneck Brewing. I just wanted to thank you all so much for coming to my channel. It blows my mind just from being on Jack's Cooking with Jack show channel. In 48 hours, I went from 61 subscribers to 356 subscribers. I can't believe it. And my new subscribers, I want to thank you for coming along with, uh, with me on this adventure. Um, I hope I can keep you all entertained and maybe even we can learn something together. Um, I've already picked up a couple of ideas uh, from comments that you all have made of things I'm going to try in the future and I'll be making videos of that. Um, I also uh, would ask that if you have something that you'd like me to do, uh, beer related or otherwise, put it in the comments below. Um, I'll read that and put that into consideration and who knows, maybe one of your su suggestions will become a, a, another uh, an episode. Um, I've got uh, a couple of things coming up that I'm doing today. Um, I've got a beer with an infection in it. I'm going to be showing you uh, some steps that I'm going to be taking. Uh, I belong to a beer forum uh, called 17 Brew Crew. Um, if you all are familiar with CraigTube, that's where I learned a lot of what I know about home brewing. And Craig Tube and a couple of his other friends, he's in Canada and a couple of other friends in Canada have started this 17 Brew Crew forum. And one of the people on there uh, had the same problem with the infected batch and they are trying, or did try exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to show you. They had success with it, so I'm hoping I, I am too. Also, the beer that I made on Jack's channel uh, a week and a half ago, or I guess it's two weeks now, Two weeks ago, um, I'm getting ready to uh, keg it up and show you just a little bit of that. Um, I'm pretty sure I know how it's going to turn out. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me. A big thanks again to my new subscribers um, and uh, my old subscribers. Stick around. Um, it's going to go great. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's get going. Well guys, you hear me preaching about sanitation and that is why. This IPA, I brewed it back on Thanksgiving weekend and I've got an infection. I'm going to put a link in the bottom of what I'm fixing to try. One of my fellow YouTubers um, tried an experiment and I'm going to put a link to the beer form that he and I belong to explaining exactly what he did and his experience with it and how it turned out. I'm going to give it a shot, see if it's going to work for me, so I don't have to pour out this five gallons of IPA. Uh, the other thing I'm doing today, right there, is the four gallons that I brought home from uh, Cooking with Jack when I was on his show. I'm going to be kegging that up, getting it ready to drink here in the next couple of days. Uh, I was on the phone with Jack last night, helping him out. Uh, he was uh, bottling what I left him, able to get six bottles out of it, and about 15 days from now, he's going to have some beer to cook with. Well, the good news is it doesn't smell infected at all. So I'm hoping this little experiment will work. Uh, it's still got a good color to it. Get up there, where am I at? There we go. So it has a good color to it. So hopefully we'll be able to save this because this is an awful good smelling beer. Now, as I'm siphoning this out of my carboy, I'm making sure to keep the infection away from my auto siphon and I'm also going to stop this probably a little bit shy of what I would normally go just to make sure I don't suck up any infection into what I'm taking out of the carboy. So I stopped siphoning just a little bit shy of what I normally did. I probably lost about half a gallon there but I'm willing to lose that just to keep from getting any infection as you can see. The infected spot is still in there. It never came anywhere close to my auto siphon. Uh, but I transferred it over into my sanitized stock pot. So our next step is coming up. 
In case you're wondering what I use for a wedge from a carboy, blue painter's tape works great. Just, I don't call it redneck brewing for nothing. Now I'm gonna take the stock pot, put it in the oven. I've got the oven set to 170 degrees. With my particular oven, it will never go above 160. I know that for a fact. So we're gonna hold it at 160 for one hour to make sure the beer uh, warms up to 160 degrees. Because we're keeping it below 180, I'm not gonna have any alcohol boil off, so we shouldn't lose any ABVs. And at 160 degrees, the infection should be killed at that temperature. So now all I'm gonna do is just let it rest in there for the next hour. Well, we're an hour and a half later and we finally got up to temp. It took a little bit longer than I expected. But I'm fixing to move our beer into our keg and get it chilling down. Okay, so I've transferred the IPA into the keg after it's cooled down a little bit. I saved just a little bit to test it. I haven't tasted it yet. Clarity's fine. I'm really happy with the clarity. But let's taste it. Let's see if it tastes infected. I don't taste like an IPA. It doesn't taste like it was infected at all. It smells perfect. So I think we might have successfully saved this beer. Thank you guys for sticking with me today, and we'll catch you on the next one.